Hello everybody, it's Henry Harrison. Welcome back. I'm glad you could make it to another week of the astrology for 2021. This week we're going to look at the week of Sunday the 2nd through Friday the 7th of May. And at the end of the video, I'd like to talk briefly about what mundane astrology can tell us about the situation in India. So, there's a few big aspects this week. Not too major, um, but they will color the way that we encounter the week and um, they could present some challenges to people in general and mainly that would be the sun square to Saturn which will be about um, you know your personal energy and desires being at an odds with the restrictions the structures everything concerning your personal energy and needs and wants will be coming to a head with um, what Saturn represents. So that could be difficulty with authority figures, um, that could be seeming blocked in um, so that you have to do something that you don't want to do. So that would be a good day for self-examination. And it looks like with the square to Uranus and the conjunction to Saturn, um, and the square to the Sun on that day uh, with Mercury in the very last degrees of Taurus um, this will be a day more for reflection if you can Mercury will also be at the square to Jupiter in the morning on that day which can indicate um, you know making a plan seeing the big picture um, the difficulty there would be getting lost in the largeness of the picture and um, neglecting the details. So being able to focus on the details in this day will be an added benefit. But otherwise, um, that's that. So bookended on either side of that are on Sunday we have Mercury, Trine, Pluto, and on the other side, on May 6th, Thursday, we have Venus, Trine, Pluto, retrograde. Both of those are retrograde. So as Venus and Mercury leave Taurus this week, they both have to pass through the Trine to Pluto and the Square to Jupiter um, at different times. So, without saying much about that, we're just going to look at the moon transit. I feel like those transits are pretty easy to pick up what they mean. I mean, because Pluto is retrograde, it could be more internal. Um, you know, looking at the deep mysteries, looking at the deep with Mercury, looking at deep um, hidden truths. Uh, within you would be favorable at this time. Um, communications about serious matters uh, can come out easily at this time on Sunday. But let's just look at the transiting astrology. So we kind of left off last week with um, the Pluto applying the conjunction to or the moon applying the conjunction to Pluto retrograde and the trine to Mercury so that perfects in the morning of Sunday and the moon moving to Aquarius uh, about about three o'clock so very briefly avoid of course off of Pluto which is not pleasant um, you know it, it still might be a good day to um, 
be listening out for different communications to come in uh, in an easy way um, but they probably will be connected to power mysterious things of the nature that we'd rather not know about them because they're not exactly pleasant but it is um, a serious opportunity again for communication so the moon will move through that and move through Aquarius the rest of the day now I think we had an aspect here so I think we had um, uh, yeah Venus will sextile um, Neptune that's a pretty mild aspect of this past week we had um, Mercury sextile Neptune I think it was yesterday yeah it was definitely yesterday in the evening um, and it was relatively mild but you know our value situations this type of relationship is going through this confusing <laughs> muddling um, thing and it can be helpful with the sextile the Mercury sextile Neptune was more helpful than I expected I didn't think it would be because of the it was on top of a square to Neptune the moon was but in my opinion this will be not it will be very sweet and nice even though the moon is in Aquarius by this point which is more individualized and you know since seeing that we're we have this moon applying to Saturn after this applying the square to Uranus after the moon goes into Aquarius um, it may like the background or just what's going on may, may be pleasant but you know we're, we're, we're doing this again we're dealing with the square um, in conjunction this time the square to Uranus and the conjunction to Saturn so there's a sobering serious situation and you know it's happening on top of the square to the Sun so what that says to me, let's pull that up, 1450. Okay. So, Venus sextile Neptune. The moon will move through the alignment, positive alignment, to the north node and the south node. So, whatever was coming up for you in Sagittarius after the moon moved through and before the moon moved through the south node this week, um, connected to discipline, connected to order, structure, something of that nature is coming up now, but um, I think if you honored that at that time, um, you may see a better result. It still may be a difficulty. It will certainly be... Um, As far as the moon is concerned, it will be letting go at this point. The moon is, you know, come off the full moon in Scorpio. Now he's at the last um, quarter. I think it's called a half moon, but I call it a quarter because it's a quarter of the zodiac. The last quarter, and he's decreasing in light. So it's a critical situation around awareness. So definitely be tuned in to what comes up today. Be aware of it. Don't react. Um, it will be sobering, um, connected to restriction. And because so the sun is applying the square to Saturn, perfecting in the morning on this day. Um, and he's already moved through Uranus. You know, we've put a lot of light on this Uranus area with the Sun and now we have this challenge around the restrictions around the difficulties all right so to move on the moon will apply the square to Venus I believe by Tuesday morning so that was Monday. So just so we're clear on Monday, you know, it's about letting go. It's about being aware. It's about this 
challenging situation with, you know, a desire to do something unexpected. Unexpected things might come out today. Um, it's about communicating and thinking about a big plan, but not missing the details. It's about um, your personal energies being in conflict with the structure. All those things are going on, and they're fateful because the moon is connected to the North Node. So it's a connection to discipline, it's a connection to this Gemini and Sagittarius areas of our life. So I think whenever we see the North Node, the South Node contacts um, from now on um, through May, you know, it's, it's talking about what's going to come up with the eclipses. And the good thing, <laughs> good, the good thing is that Saturn is there. So because Saturn is at the trine and the sextile to the north and the south node, you know, as long as you're being aware and honoring the um, discipline that Saturn is bringing into your life, um, there will be less difficulties, I believe, if you're willing to do that. Okay, so if we'd missed um, this aspect, Mercury will move into Gemini, his own house, where he will station retrograde. Now he will station retrograde on top of Venus on the 28th of May. And he will retrograde back to the 16th degree on the 14th. So all of these things we do with Mercury this week, you know, they're still in the course of ordinary business activities. You know, we don't really start to get into the weird weird realm of Mercury retrograde until about the 14th, because that's the place he'll move back to on his retrograde path. So we can still expect this week to be, you know, relatively ordinary business activities with Mercury, even dignified because he's in his own house. All right, so on May 4th, Tuesday, then in the morning, the moon will move through the square to Venus, which could be, you know, a desire to um, spend too much. Um, definitely want to watch your spending this week with um, these con this contact of the sun to the moon. Um, I think Saturn will be helping us with that, you know. If you're gonna buy something, make sure it's durable. Uh, don't don't be um, I want to say iconoclastic. I'm not sure that's the right word though. Don't be uh, too stubborn in doing things uh, in a weird way. I think is a one way to put it, not to down on you, because I mean, I might have to do something like that too, you know, everybody has, you know, this in their chart somehow, but, you know, Saturn is not interested in the non-durable stuff, so watch out for that. Yep, there's a possibility of ex excess spending, uh, let's see, I'm already forgetting what aspects. So the conjunction to Jupiter forward, of course, off the conjunction to Jupiter at 19.05 and about an hour, of two hours of void, of course, and then um, the moon in Pisces. All right. So we're highlighting this Venus Jupiter square that will occur at the end of the week. And, you know, Venus, Jupiter square, you know, again, <laughs> watch your spending, watch that if you want something, you know, you've seen the details of it as well, you know, don't rush into a large purchase, um, which could be possible, and it may seem like there's only a limited amount of time to make that purchase, but, you know, cooler heads will prevail, so just, you know, don't do that. Or, you know, Venus square Jupiter could mean uh, just a very benefic situation. You know, it could be very nice in some way in these two areas of your chart. 
what else to say. The moon is basically highlighting that for the end of the week right here. So the moon will move into Pisces and immediately make the trine to Mars after the square to Mercury. So if you're still awake at this point, you know, there's a difficulty around how we are interfacing, how we're communicating, how we're trading, um, transiting, some sort of difficulty in the evening about that. And if you're up that late, you know, you may start to see it, you know, people just aren't interacting as best as they could. But by the morning of Wednesday, the moon will move through the trine to Mars, and by the afternoon make the sextile to Uranus. So the moon is even highlighting this Mercury, or this, um, fateful sextile between Mars and Uranus, which is building up. Mars and Uranus, um, so once that perfects, um, next, some, next Tuesday, Mars Uranus will perfect the sextile. I think things could get easier as far as if you want to do anything out of the ordinary, you know, there will be an open outlet for that with our, our personal energy, the way that we're generally driven to do things. So that's coming up and, you know, this could be highlighting that and it, <clears throat> overall I think it will be a good transit through Pisces. I mean, the moon isn't in a hard angle to anyone, it's just the sextile to Mars. So. It could be a really nice day um, for whatever you have that in your chart as. Um, I would expect it to be pretty darn nice all day on Wednesday, just for getting that stuff done. And uh, having a, again, having a connection to this um, Uranus area of our chart, you know, it might be a good opportunity to um, buy digital currency, not financial advice, it could be, you know, there's a connection to this um, strange, <laughs> strange uh, development in a Taurus area of your life. Um, so, and the moon will go through the north bending. So the moon is now applying, well the moon has been applying to the north node, but he's moved through the square so there is a fateful situation here for better or worse and probably generally for the better um, and by the morning of Thursday the moon well actually the moon is making the sextile to the Sun at 330 40 and Venus is trying Pluto today before the moon makes the conjunction to Neptune so Pluto retrograde Venus trying them you know it's an inward uh, you know more intense connection to our emotions um, you may have some deep insights of a different sort of nature than you did with Mercury but they're both, I think this is an important process um, that we can go through to um, learn and from with Mercury. And with Venus, it's a, it's, you know, it's a similar, trans easy, mild, transformative aspect with our emotions. You know, you could have some deep insights on this day. So, leave it at that. So the moon will move through that and make the conjunction to Neptune by... Uh, 1600 which is basically on the trine to Venus on the trine to Pluto so it looks nice it looks like a nice day overall Wednesday and Thursday are looking really nice actually most of this week looks nice except for Monday Monday has more of a connection to you know your personal energies and structure and you know 
finishing these um, difficulties, so to speak, with Taurus, Mercury and Taurus in the last degrees, you know, he's making the square to Jupiter, who is in the 29th degree, 28th degree, so, you know, I think, again, to keep talking about Monday, um, it's, you know, if you're going to make a plan, if you have a vision, if you see it, you know, don't miss the details. And I think we will, if you get the details, we're going to get them because, I mean, we're, Mercury is going to go through Gemini being a good spot. We'll be able to work out the details. Just realize that the vision you have on Monday probably won't have all the details and that will need to be um, involved, you know, so that your vision can come to fruition. Okay, so Thursday is the National Day of Prayer, which is interesting for it to be on top of the conjunction to Neptune and Pisces. But let's see. So the moon will move through The, sex, the sextile to Pluto will perfect. The sextile to Venus will perfect. Moon will be void, of course, for a few hours. Move into Aries. And then the moon will make the sextile to um, Mercury in Gemini. So we have a mutual reception. Well, do we? Do we have a mutual reception? No. No, we don't. <laughs> but um, it is a good energy. It's um, the moon is in Mars's house. You know, the the Mars will like that, and Mercury is in his own house. So we have a good opportunity for some business activity, especially related to what Mercury is naturally good at by this time, and really chipping away at it. I think that that moon will move, will build up to the sextile all day. Uh, Friday looks like a really productive day. All right, so we get into Saturday, the last day for this report. And on this day, the moon will make the square to Mars. So, I mean, it's the other side of it. Uh, when Mars is in, or the moon is in, Libra, we have this square. So there could be this mishandling with our activity. You know, Mars is in fall in uh, Cancer. But that's in the early morning, so it may not be as noticeable, maybe for other parts of the world. And the moon will connect to the north and south node. And the moon will connect to the sextile to Saturn. So it's a day to, you know, be connected to these serious themes, these themes of order and structure in our lives. Um, and I think that's a good thing for it to be on top of Venus square Jupiter, because while that could indicate good, it, it could also indicate excess. So I think curbing the excess will be the best thing we can do in order to fully enjoy this Venus square Jupiter as much as we can. So Venus is in the 29th degree of Taurus, so if you feel pressured to buy something, I mean, I just wouldn't, really. Um, because, you know, it's, ex it's an extreme situation. You know, if you do, make sure you think out all the details of it. Don't get lost in the vision of how you want to um, experience this uh, enjoyment, this pleasure. What what something, a situation or a product could bring to you, you know, don't get lost in the, the vision of it. Everybody's done that, you know. You know, you, you think something looks so nice and then you buy it and it's like, huh. Hmm. <laughs> well, uh, I guess that was that. And then it's over, you know, and you have your thing, but, you know, I think that could be more of a difficulty on this day. But Venus will move into Gemini by the evening, and I'll leave it at that. 
I don't know what that means. Venus and Gemini. Here's the thing. We can talk about some of the positions. So Mercury will be on top of Venus when he stations retrograde in Gemini. So Venus in Gemini isn't generally talking about, you know, our ability to make social contacts, our ability to harmonize with the situation, like on a street level situation. It makes me think of like people that are good at um, quickly making connections. One here, one there, you know. So if you've been missing that in your life, I mean that that's that could be a, a good time to make new connections. Um, but you know, this area will be going through the full the annual solar eclipse. So and the Mercury retrograde. Well, not not this area of Venus. Um, it's not until the sixteenth degree um, that we see that retrograde path of Mercury retrograde end. But, um, you know, in general, when we see these contacts of Venus with the Moon in the coming week, um, weeks ahead, it could be a better time for making these social connections. Anyway, that's, that's what I have for you this week. Um, so yeah. It honestly looks like a pretty good week. Um, I had a pretty good week this week, too. I mean, that's all personal, but it wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. All right, so I promised we'd talk about the situation in India, and we're going to do it very briefly. Okay, so here is the chart for India. And we already know that the situation in India is very bad with the, with the COVID disease. So the moon represents the people. Um, the people are on the 10th house, 9th house cusp in this chart. Uh, I've looked at the Delhi chart and the moon is in the 10th house in that place, but ninth house, tenth house cusp. So that could be, you know, if it's the tenth house, it could be more success to people in general. Um, but, you know, this looks more like to me, like, you know, the moon is in, people want to do, people want to get out and do these group interactions, one-on-one -on -one interactions within the group. Um, we're not going to do a full mundane astrology report for this right now. Uh, it's honestly very grave and it fills me with um, a sense of foreboding. But point being, the ascendant is ruled by the sun, which indicates the people, and that sun is in the eighth house. He was ruled by Jupiter in the seventh house, ruled by Saturn in the sixth house. So it's all talking about health, one-on-one -on -one interactions, and disease, loss. Neptune is there, so it's difficult to ascertain what information is true or not true about this loss, but loss to the people is certainly indicated in this chart. And this is a fixed sign ascending chart, so the situation is as though fixed for the year to come, from March 20th onward. So that does tell us something about why the situation is so difficult, and why it's so hard to know about, um, why this loss is so great, why it's like, I've seen the news coverage talking about like a tidal wave of suffering in this place. Um, the next wave, Neptune. 
So there will be this great loss indicated by Neptune in the same house as the Sun which is indicating the people. Now Venus is also there and she's indicating the government and the streets the third house, the tenth house and the third house she's exalted but she's in the eighth house so you know the energy of being out is exalted it's good um, the energy of the government in general is good it's under the beams of the Sun in the eighth house however so although there may be in some way good energy both of those areas um, the ruler of them is in the eighth so of itself that planet is signifying loss and death so it could signify loss and death to the government and to the streets if you know very much about India you know the situation of the streets is very different than America, for instance. Okay. It's heavy stuff, man. Alright, that's all I wanted to do for that. So, I thank you for listening to my report. I hope it was instructive, insightful, useful, helpful. <laughs> all the good stuff. And I will catch you on the next one. Thank you all.